Welcome back, everyone. This is Renee Piani, and this is Get Real About Love. I am the love designer, and I am here with my fabulous co-host, Clayton Norcross. How you doing there, Clay? All right. Good. I know that this has been a really crazy trying time for a lot of people in the world, and you have been so open and raw about your circumstances and your healing process and the, well, the you've goal. been so helpful to so many people i know you're slammed all the time with people who are looking for solutions and you know it's my pleasure to assist in that thank you well it's been um quite an adventure this is our i think ninth uh video i think something uh, like that and we have been doing get real about love tips and the goal is to give people inspiration, insights into some of the challenges, and, and yours has been going through a breakup, right? So today we are talking about a really important aspect of love is letting go of love, get letting go with love. Like the whole theme is how do you let go of something that you thought was gonna work with love so that you can move on and have an open heart? So that's sort of what we've been uh, dealing with. And I know that uh, you're right in the middle of it. And that yesterday you um, had some very interesting um, conversations. So maybe you could talk a little bit about it. Well, um, in my process, um, which began about six months ago, um, I realized that I was having a challenging time uh, moving on. In spite of all the work that I had done, I felt that, uh, well, you and I kind of reached the conclusion that what I needed was a sense of closure so that I could, you know, release myself from um, such, a, such a close emotional linkage. I felt about 80% moved on, but about 20% of me, you know, I think maybe my little guy inside was like, you know, I, uh, I don't know, not there yet. <laughs> so uh, I had had um, lots of people tell me, you know, cut it off, you know, move on to the next. Uh, I've had buddies say, hey, go get another skirt. You know, there's a million of them. And, you know, you, sometimes we can just have too many voices in our head and, and it doesn't pay to share your, uh, your pearls with too many people, but to trust those people like yourself that really have experience with a broad range of circumstances. Anyway, um, Renee and I came to the conclusion that it would be really useful, since I am I'm an actor and I'm a very auditory person, to to push through that sort of uh, macho way of thinking, shall we say, yeah. and conventional way of thinking, to just distract yourself with other things, but to move in and, and ask for a sense of closure. So Renee gave me a very powerful uh, bullet point script that really you know, expressed my desire to find out, do you see a future for us? In spite of the pain that my, my ex-partner is in, do you see me in your future somewhere down the line? Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? And that was something that my... Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to speak to this because when people are in the midst of a breakup, right? They doubt themselves. They have all sorts of ruminating thoughts, like they keep them up late at night, the what ifs, and what if we tried this? What if we tried that? And sometimes they may text each other during the breakup process, and they might not get responses that they had hoped for. So then they start to get doubtful about themselves and fearful. And so I, I'm kind of a very, as you know, I mean, maybe you notice I'm very blunt about things. And I like, and I said to him, I think that, that you, because you're an expressive person and an auditory person and you haven't heard from her, seen her, or had a lot of communication, that maybe it would be a good idea if you just had a closure conversation to see if she was open. And I think that what came out of it was a sense of, um, I, I, I mean, I don't want to speak what you were feeling, but you told me there was a sort of a sense of freedom. So maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Well, yeah, I think the, the net result of it was, you know, let me just look at my circumstances. Let me make the choice, you know, listening for, for divine guidance, if you will, and intuitive understanding, you know, is this ripping off the bandage of something that's trying to heal 
or is this the balm that I'm putting on the wound that is going to allow it to heal? And that's the conclusion that I came to was to stop trying to, to cling to artificial members, um, remedies and just say, Hey, listen, dear, you know, I, there's a part of me that is having a hard time letting go while we're still communicating. Do you see me in your future? And when I got, uh, an, uh, an unqualified, an unequivocal answer, you know, like, gosh, how can I know that? You know, I'm so, you know, buried with my own pain. And I said, well, thank you. That's the answer that I needed because that tells me that I need to let go. And it gave me a sense of closure, which carried with it a sense of relief in a way, because I realized it has nothing to do with me. I have no control over it. I need to let go and let God do his healing work with her and stop trying to put a, you know, a round peg in a square hole. And, uh, or to hold on to something that isn't available now and waste time in your life when you could be not only expanding your, you know, friendships and things like that, or waiting for someone to change, you know, if they're meant as a person goes through a healing process, sometimes it's just the right love at the wrong time, you know, and people always say, but are they going to come back? But in the meantime, you have to live your life. And that's what we've been working on. And, you know, you didn't jump into old patterns and running around with other women right away or jumping in. You, ch you looked at patterns, you changed patterns. And that's what's most important for you to get real about a loop that you might be in, like rushing into love. And you had said that, you know, you had just recently broken up when you met her. She had broken up with her spouse and you had broken up with somebody. Right. Rebound, rebound, you know. So in retrospect, using your technology, had I stepped back and said, whoa, I'm rebounding. She's just out of something. I need to go real slow here, if at all, and make sure that I'm not walking into a, you know, a, a, a tunnel with a freight train in it and get run over. And so knowing that I, as an actor, as an artist, as a, as, a, as a man who has a pretty balanced masculine and feminine, I realize that I'm vulnerable to those same oxytocin chemicals that anybody is, that especially women understand that, I think. And the whole idea that men don't feel, I think they don't express their feelings as easily as women do, but we feel just as much as women do. And we need to be careful of getting all hooked up in things that have nowhere to go ultimately. And this is kind Sometimes, of what I expect. That's why when someone says right now is not a really good time, but we could have some fun, then don't think that your love is going to bring that change that needs to happen inside of them, right? The healing process needs to happen. But when you let go with love, right? You, you tell the other person, God, I learned so much from you some of the things that you expressed that she said about you made you feel like, wow, you really were love. She did. The feelings that you were feeling were real. Yeah. Uh, her feelings were real, but her soul just was in a healing process and that she, the timing went, you know, wasn't right. And she's in a healing process, especially during this coronavirus. So many people are, you know, home alone, having so much time to think and to understand and to contemplate and so that's why the book you know when I, i've told so many people maybe if you have the time to do the inner work in the book it'll help you see yourself it's all about looking at yourself you can always put the blame on someone else but then your heart puts up the wall right and that is what i've been trying to help you to see that that wall that you could put up very easily is usually caused because the other person's in pain and if you could only look and I always say, look down on their life like a movie. You know, if you could be in her position with her circumstances or vice versa, if a woman could be, or anyone that you're with, if you could try and really look at it from the way their heart is dealing with something that happened before you and not make it about you being not good enough, then it doesn't hurt as much. You know, it is very painful when you bond with someone and then they rip the band-aid off so fast and you're like wait what just happened you know so having deep conversations and i don't know some people would disagree with me but there was men in my life that hurt me and i went and i said i need to see you face to face 
So now people have Zoom and FaceTime. Those times are work. We didn't have this technology back then. So you had to meet face to face because right. I just wanted to look at them and say, you know, didn't we have a bond? And they would say, you know what, Renee, I did. Or, you know, or maybe I wasn't ready. And there was men that I wouldn't, I didn't want to face them because I was embarrassed, but really it had all to do with me. They met me when I had just broken up with someone and they were trying to give me all this love. And I kept saying, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And then finally I just said, I can't do this anymore. Right. And, and the guys that I ran into years later, when I looked at all the people that I ran away from or people that ran away from me, it usually didn't have anything to do with them or, you know, not wanting me. It had to do with me being unhealed or them being unhealed. Right. So you think about that. There's a lot of unhealed people because people are not honest with each other right up front or you as a person haven't been listening. You have not been listening, <laughs> you know, so you, you were listening, but you didn't believe that well, it was true. I think this is a, was a key factor is when the conversation began, I, uh, I used some things that I had in my wonderful sharing with you and your, and your lovely husband, Joe, um, that I had been inadvertently, perhaps in my ego quite a bit, had mm -hmm. been inadvertently a bit selfish, seeing the possibilities, all the raw materials that were there to create this higher love that I had not experienced in my marriage, mm -hmm. thinking, wow, look what got airdropped into my life by, by the divine. And I got really excited about that. The trouble is I didn't read the red flags that the other part wasn't as available to that as I would fantasize. So here again, without getting too technical and analytical, just, just begin to ask the questions in faith and to know that the answers aren't bad. They're just information to protect you from walking into something and having, I had created a bit of a fantasy about what was possible. And then I suffered for holding on to that. So I have to say that, that a great deal of my pain was of my own making. And I cannot blame her in any way, nor would I wish to. I believe that uh, we create, promote, or allow everything that comes into our, our consciousness. So my work now is to step back, and I'll finish with just watch what thoughts are living rent-free in my head and go, is that true? Yesterday, I got confirmation that there's a lot of love between us, but there's also a lot of healing that needs to take place. And the, the, the relationship that I want with her is not available right now. And I either accept that or I pound my head against the wall. So that's my work. That's very, very, very powerful. And I would like everyone out there that if, you've, if you have an experience like this, we'd love to hear your sharing because sometimes when, if it's either a letter you know, it could be a voicemail, it could be, you know, a conversation to let go with love because sometimes if you walk away because you're hurt, the other pe person takes it so personally because they may not have listened or maybe they have old pain from their hearts that hadn't been healed and it got triggered, right? So these, these love loops that happen to people often keep causing one wall and then another wall and then another wall and it stops people from blasting open their heart to, t yeah, to take I mean, care of it. It's, it's something that's super important. That's why I'm so, I mean, I, I am honored that you have been promoting my work and my book and all these things. I have classes coming up all the time, flirting classes and healing classes and support because people take it out on themselves and you just beat your brain you lay in bed ruminating, and I know I did it. And if you read the book, it's my story of the vulnerability of me putting out my pain in a book to show you how to change these patterns. It's, it's kind of like taking responsibility for yourself and looking at you, getting real with you. Well, it, it frees you up to love the other person, to not give up the love, not cut off the love. I mean, that was a very powerful thing that you and I did. We didn't cut the cable that has life and blood and, and love and you know, living energy in it. We took that cable and we rerouted it back into my heart. So I give that love that I, the many people said, cut it off, throw it away, it's a dead root. You know, and I, and I rerouted that energy back into my own heart. That's a revolutionary concept I submit to you. And a much healthier one than just cut people off. 
it's so painful when you don't know the answers, but what happens is that some people will call me, they'll be like, I'm going to call him or I'm going to call her and let her know how I feel. And I'm like, you have to calm your spirit down. Look at both sides of it. Get somebody to help you logically look at it before you go and destroy what could be a conversation that could heal you from the five other men or women yeah. before that person, right? Let because me what happens, that. I'm sorry, yeah. what happens is once that pain hits again, and if it's happened before, it activates all the times that it's happened. You have an overreaction and then you take it even harder on yourself. And it's, I remember when I would, uh, when I got hurt before, I would get activated by a, a, a song or a conversation that somebody I was having that I was casually dating and they would say there was something going on in your heart that you really weren't open and that's what I see is happening with people they just keep rushing under these quick fixes without doing the inner work to get real so that they can find extraordinary love therefore you're not getting the learning value of why spirit why the universe has brought why you've attracted that experience and I, I have to emphasize, when you finally take responsibility for what you've created or allowed in your life to persist, you've, you've tried to make a cake out of crumbs that someone is perhaps just able to give you. It's not malicious. It's just, this is where they are. And you and can hate them for it. If you accepted it without asking the right questions, because you rushed, because you were in need of that need for speed, right? And in some of our videos, we talked about don't rush into love. If love is really there, the foundation of love, and somebody's saying, I'm not really sure I'm really ready for this, and then you guys jump in bed and you get him activated and heart start happening, the pain is still there. It just, it, it, get, it surfaces once the other person gets bonded and then starts making, you know, hey, where are we going with this? And the person's like, oh no, wait, I can't do this. And of course uh -huh. it makes you- That's familiar. You know, and then it makes you feel so rejected. And the real truth is, it's their loss. You should be able to feel so good about yourself that you say, you know what? I'm taking my time next time. And that's when my life changed. So I wrote a whole book about my pattern of jumping back in to get that feeling and getting hurt again and again until I changed by getting real with my little girl inside of me that wanted that love so much. And that's what you've been talking about. And it's so special that you're so raw. And I just think that if you can let go with love and be loving to yourself, as someone walks out of your life, that door closes. If you do the healing work and understand what happened and not take it so personally, then the doorway to your heart will open because you've let go with love for yourself and trying to have a perspective of the other person and understand their heart so that you can walk away with the gift of what you did get out of it. If somebody manipulated, lied, or cheated, or all that, that's a different story. This sure. was an honest conversation that both people were in the need of love and they didn't really hear the truth, right? They weren't listening to the, or looking at the signs along the way. And now you know that next time you're not gonna do that before you examine you know, where a person's heart well, is. At, at the very least, when, I, when I'm receiving so many mixed signals, to realize, whoa, let me slow down the train here. Let me step back to an emotionally safer distance, maybe take a couple of weeks, you know, vacation from it. Let me, let me listen to my heart about what's really happening here. I'm feeling kind of icky about she did this, she did that, she didn't do this. And not make her wrong about it, not to make him wrong about it, but what does this mean for my objective to take care of myself in this context? And that's not selfish, that's just smart. And it doesn't have to be at the expense of the other person. So that was, I, we're just about out of time, I suppose. And, but I wanted to just say that the net result of it was very loving. And it felt um, not easy, but very freeing to say, I love you. And I, I don't know when I'll speak to you again, but I got to back away because I got to get my heart back. And I can't do it as it long as I'm- It affects your work. It affects your friendships. It affects your openness. And now that you know that she cared and, she, and you know that- your love made a difference in her life that she just wasn't ready for it. And that's your sign from the universe, from God, whatever you believe that it's time for you to be free. And that freedom allows you to, to give yourself that nurturing that, wow, 
this really was true and it really didn't have much to do with me not being good enough because people take it out on themselves and I know I did. I mean, I wrote about it. <laughs> so I'm really proud of you and I know that, you know, your work will be blessed. The, de the depth that you will bring to the table in your craft as an actor, you'll be able to tune into this feeling. And I know that, you know, at, you know through all the years that I've done this type of work, I, I can honestly say that you made such a deep commitment to your heart and you've been totally honest with your audience, with our audience. And I think that the women and the men of the world that are listening, if they are, we'd love to hear from you because these are the type of things that can change your whole life. Because you don't want to ruminate and hold heart pain from one person in, in, in your world that can ruin like the next you know, four years of your life. I have people that call me that are still um, hung up on somebody from college that they haven't let go of. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. There was a woman I talked to yesterday and she gave me the list of all the men that she had had a relationship with and she never let anyone in because of the first time. Her value was, uh, her self-worth was compromised from the pain of the first breakup in her high school days and she's in her 57 years old and never been married and never let anybody really close she would just have affairs but never let anyone close and now she's looking at herself and she realizes that she's done this to herself but she's never had a guide to take her through the process of healing that part of herself so it's very important yeah, I, th I think it's, it's, it's priceless to have such a knowledgeable consigliere, diciamo in italiano, someone that you, you trust, who has experience as you do. Your book obviously is very rich and, and full of tools and affirmations and things. And probably the biggest uh, thing that I've gained from, from our work together is to realize that, that the love that I had um, longed for uh, hope to receive that sustaining, validating affection and love. I am learning how to give that to myself rather than put the pressure on my loved one to fulfill that part of me. And that makes me much more safe, self-sourced and less vulnerable in the love arena so I can relax and enjoy it. What a concept. Also know that this learning makes you be a deeper connected partner and you know that you can love deeply. Like when you, when we talked yesterday, I said, you deserve to have somebody that's ready for to love you deeply and to have sacred relationship by being honest. And, you know, now that I've been married, you know, many of people always say, well, are you, is this girl married? You know, it's, and I know, you know, my husband, I was so glad that, you know, he came to see me yesterday and my husband was here and he's been through two marriages before yeah. and it was heartbreaking. Very open about what he, and he's like. You deserve bet the best. You deserve somebody available, and I've been telling him this. And I think sometimes hearing it from a guy, you know, I think really stepping into I deserve this, and I'm a good person. And I now I know um, from being so close to you and so intimate with him and many of my clients that as you see the value of what you brought to that woman's life, and she even validated it yesterday. Yeah. And I think, yes. you know, she validated that your love was so powerful and so beautiful. She just wasn't in the right space to receive it. And that is a super powerful lesson. Well, that lesson. was huge, you know, that, that you can't get through a thousand texts, but to, to look someone in the eye, see their sincerity, there's sometimes there's just no substitute for that. And to realize that you have, even though the relationship didn't go where I would like it to go or expected it to go, I was, a, I was a, of incredible contribution to someone's life who had been really disappointed and really trashed and, and uh, yeah. disappointed. Yeah. And, um, and there's value in that. So that's my takeaway from yesterday is to know that it was not wasted time. My love was not wasted. And in spite of uh, the disappointment that I feel that it, it didn't come to where I wanted it to go, um, that there was value in it. And that's important to let go. With all the unresolved relationships that I discuss with people and all the disappointments, sometimes as our Reverend uh, Michael Beckler says, 
the disappointment, right, is that that person at that time was not appointed for you. Like to really trust in the plan of the universe or God, that that dist, dist appointment was happening because that person wasn't aligned with where your soul is at this time. And it's really God's rejection. You know, that rejection is God's protection. So you don't spend three or four years trying to heal someone that isn't ready. You can say, I've offered my heart. I loved you dearly and I see you're in a healing process and I'm going to pray for you and who knows what could happen in the future. But in the meantime, I'm going to go live my life because I'm ready for sacred love. And that gotcha. is what you proclaimed yesterday. Got you. You know, Lynn, you, you helped me to not have a script, not a word for word. I don't mean that folks. I just mean that Renee gave me a bullet point list of, I see these and we, we collaborated on this together. These are the key points that I want to make not only so that I can love and let go, but I can get free knowing that I made a contribution. I wasn't used or abused. I'm not a victim here. I chose to be where I went and let me own that so that there's nobody's wrong here. And there gets to be loving forgiveness for any perception, shall we say, of, of, uh, of wrongdoing. And all of that was just washed away yesterday and it didn't really particularly change the situation, except that I got to hold it in a really beautiful place, as did she. And that's priceless. Everyone out there, I hope that this inspires you. If you, know, if you need help with that, I mean, it's, it's really taking a look at speaking your truth from your heart to somebody that you've spent a year or five years or 10 years or however long it was. Um, and rushing into love is not a good idea when somebody's letting you know that right now I'm in the middle of a situation. Like when people call me, I go, tell me your situation, right? And, and I'll say, well, this means you need to heal. You don't want to rush, you know, let's take our time so that you can really learn to navigate those secrets to opening your heart so that you can magnetize love instead of rushing into love to numb pain, you know? And I think that this, Letting go with love is very important for many people because most um, people would just say, cut them off, be done with it. And, and you can't do that when there's attachments of, of energy still between you. You want to heal and, and heal with, with a loving, uh, loving heart so that your heart can stay open to the unlimited possibilities that there are. And uh, I'm really glad that we had this conversation tonight, Clayton. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Thank and you I think uh, you're going to be traveling sometime soon to do some more work um, in European countries. I know you're going to be, be gone. So pretty soon we're probably going to be doing less of these, but we're going to, uh, I think, do one or two more. And we're hoping that, uh, I'm hoping to hear from you. Um, my site is reneepiani.com. I do offer uh, free 20 minute consultations and my book is available and I would love to hear from you and any comments on Clayton's channels or my channels um, so that if you need a healing, uh, some healing help, I'm here to help. And I thank you for endorsing me, I guess you could say, Clay, because you've been really raw and real and I think that people can feel your heart and soul from oh. anywhere that they're watching. And I think the, uh, the link to uh, Kindle versions of your book, hard right. copies available through Amazon. I think it's a great place to start and uh, perhaps a free consultation with you just to kind of get going in the right direction is an invaluable resource, everybody. So I would encourage you to, to uh, take advantage of it. Well, we, I leave, we leave all of our um, social media to attach to you. We want to hear your feedback. And if you are in a healing crisis or whatever, I am here and available to help. Um, I do sessions and you can check it all out on my website. My life has been dedicated to healing people's hearts. And I, I have to say the only reason I can say that is because I finally did manifest. I had to take a look at my family lineage. If you look behind me um, and if any of you have stories, I would love to hear from you because I am writing a book called the power of your love lineage, because we learn from our role models and some of my role models in my generations of Italians, all you Italian people out there, I am 100% Italian. I just want you to know I don't speak it. And we are um, right in the process of um, translating the book into Italian. 
And uh, I am going to get chapter one of the book ready to give you for free here very soon. So I'm gonna create a list that we're gonna put up for this video that if you email me, you can let me know, um, email me your name, your email, what you're interested in. And if you're interested in a Zoom session, we could set it up no matter where you live in the, around the world, or if you want the free chapter. And as soon as I get it done, I promise that I will send it to you so that you can start your path for free and see if you like it. And then if you like it, you can buy the book. And I'm hoping to get it up on Amazon in the next month or two um, and to find people to translate it and then maybe even come to Italy with Clayton when he's over there sometime to meet some of you live. That is my goal and my vision. So Clayton, I love you. I'm very proud of you. And I know that this beautiful woman we're not going to say her, her name, that she was very lucky and um, to be in your presence. And I know that she blessed your life with love as well. So if she's watching, um, I just want to say to her that, you know, you must have been a very special woman and you are a special woman in his heart. And I feel um, that I, I only hope that you'll take the opportunity to do the healing of your heart so that you can find that depth of love that you deserve. And anyone else out there listening, I wish that same wish for you. And after having a sacred marriage now for almost 15 years, I really am here just to inspire you to go for really big, grand, um, sacred love and deep, deep, deep connection and, and sacred love. Because that's my goal, because the world needs love. Uh, right now and I just wish you only the best and we will be back probably for one more uh, Get real about love tips and then throughout the summer if I can catch mr. Clayton in between his movies and TV things We will be sending you more love tips as his life and my life transpire and we wish you only love and success So Clayton, I'm proud of you and I'm proud of all of you for being part of our um, Get real about love tip adventure so we'll be in touch real soon and God bless you all. Go on, everybody. Thank all you. right. Stay in touch. And I'm going to show the book one more time. Get real about love is this is what it looks like. And yes, that is me. And um, from my heart to yours, I am here to help anyone out there to find extraordinary love. So God bless. And we will have one more show and then we'll be seeing you throughout the summer. Talk to you soon. Okay. God bless.